What's up guys? Welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks. I'm your host Caleb. If you want to support me, you can now follow me on Patreon. Not only is it the best way to support the channel, but additionally, you'll get more say in what decks I cover. Special shout out to my high contributing patrons, Newsome, you rock. Now, let's get into today's Deck Tech with Tatsunari Toad Rider. And this is going to be dedicated to one of my high contributing patrons, Excessum. Thank you for all the support. Now, this guy wanted me to build a budget deck built around Tatsunari Toad Rider, and I decided Let's try to get as many Kami as possible, but this card does not make it easy because not only does it hate on the legend rule, because Kami is legendary, it is also hard to create additional copies because your commander won't trigger unless you control a creature with, that's not named Kami, right? So getting rid of the legend rule doesn't net us Kami's. The only way to do this, or the most efficient way to do this, is using mutate cards, because we can mutate on top of our Kami, changing its name. So now we get additional Kami's. Kind of a lot of hoops to jump through, but definitely fun. The other thing we can use is Vesuvian Duplication. Now whenever we're casting are very low to the ground enchantments that target our Kami and trigger all of our enchantress uh, effects like drawing cards, dealing damage to our opponents, and uh, just uh, wiping the board, which enchantment decks are really good at having a lot of effects whenever you cast an enchantment spell, so we're definitely going to be doing a lot of that. So now on top of that, we're draining our opponents, we're getting value, and additionally, we're creating token copies of our Kami. It's definitely a fun deck that takes a lot of pieces, but once you get those pieces together the deck just kind of explodes with value and you have a great time draining your opponents to death so if that sounds like a deck tech you want to get into Let's get into it. The first goal of the deck is to get additional copies of Kimi. Vesuvian Diplomacy is one of the best ways to do this. All we need is a Shimmering Wings or a Whip Silk, and now we can easily keep targeting our Kimi, getting additional copies of him while we drain our opponents. If we aren't doing that, we're trying to mutate onto our Kimi, giving it a different name. That way we can trigger our commander again, getting an additional copy. Now, I did go and choose some of the most efficient mutate cards because, again, we're not trying to create a huge mutate stack and get a ton of mutate triggers off of one mutate. We're just trying to mutate onto our Kimi multiple times, creating a lot of Kimi. So again, I just chose low to the ground mutate cards that added value to the deck. Endless Evil is also another way we can get more Kimis. Now you will have to do this on a mutate stack. That way, again, the name won't be the same, but it's still going to be very useful. Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief is going to be amazing in this deck, just copying all of our auras, all of our mutate cards, and she's going to end up being massive and just start attacking people for a lot of damage and just give us more additional value overall. Moving on, let's get into those enchantment synergies. We have Verderan Enchantress and Enchantress's Presence. Just some solid way to draw a card whenever we cast an enchantment spell. Cetacen Champion and Edelon of Blossoms are the better versions of these cards because they trigger on ETB. So now whenever we're blinking them or additionally whenever we create a token copy of them with Ivy, we get more card advantage. Tribute to the World Tree and Elemental Bonds can kind of work like this. As long as we're mutating onto our Kami, whenever we cast another enchantment spell, we'll get another Kami, which is 3 power. So again, we can kind of trigger Elemental Bond and, and Tribute to the World Tree very efficiently this way. Sanctum Weaver is going to be some solid mana, very explosive mana when we have a lot of enchantments on the battlefield. Composer of Springs lets us put more lands into play. Herald of the Pantheon is going to lower the cost of our enchantment. Cacophony Unleashed. Not only is this going to be a pretty big nightmare, but additionally, it's going to be a solid board wipe. Doomwake Giant. Also, very good board wipe, especially when we have Whip Silk or Shimmering Wings on the battlefield. This is just going to wipe the board consistently every turn. Destiny Spinner is going to make a good portion of our deck uncounterable. Primeval Bounty is incredibly broken in this deck. I'm looking at that second ability. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put three 1-1 counters on target creature you control. This can very easily get our commander to over 21 power, and we can start just attacking people for commander damage lethal. Remember, our commander just does have that pseudo-unblockable ability, so the fact that we have a couple different ways to get him over 21 power is just going to be pretty flexible. Also, this one does give us some value with some life gain and additional creatures. 
Nylea's Colossus again. It does not take very many triggers of Nylea's Colossus to make our commander lethal, as well as just all of our other creatures. This is a 6-6 six -six that you can already make a 12-12 into a 24-24. This happens very fast and will result in you just winning the game very quickly. Ancestral Mask is another one of those cards. If we get this on our commander at the right point in the game, it will just be lethal commander damage. Moving on to the core of the deck, we have Rancor. This one's very useful because it returns itself to our hand and additionally targets Arkimi. We have Giant Inheritance. I like this here because it's going to give our whole board eventually trample while buffing it up a little bit. Additionally, it does return itself to our hand. Octopus Umbra is just solid here, giving one of our creatures base power 8 8 and then letting us tap down blockers. It's just going to make it to where we can get in for damage while protecting our commander. Canopy Covers, another solid way to protect our key pieces while additionally targeting a creature. Hallbreaker Horror, now this is in the deck so we can bounce our enchantments back to our hand and get additional value off of them. We do run some sagas, so the fact that we can bounce our sagas and reset them is going to be very useful. Additionally, with our whip silk effects, it's very easy to cast that up to eight times a turn, so we can easily start bouncing our opponent's important pieces while triggering all of our enchantment ETB triggers and draining them. Shijeki is incredibly useful in this deck. Now this is not a mill strategy so you might be scratching your head but the fact that we can keep casting this it's an enchantment that enters the battlefield and returns itself to our hand while netting us value is insanely useful. Not to mention he does have that channel ability so we can get any important pieces that we mill back to our hand. In short he digs us super deep gets us our key pieces and generates a ton of value. Gorgos Vicious Watcher this guy's really funny in this deck. We have a lot of auras in the deck that target our creatures. So now whenever we're targeting our creatures, this guy's just eating our opponent's board. This is going to be incredibly fun to use in this deck. The world spell is incredibly useful in this deck just to dig us deep. Remember, Whip Silk and Shimmering Wings are two of the best cards in the deck, so anything that digs us deeper to get us to those cards is just going to be extremely useful. And then that last ability to just start putting things into play for free is also pretty dope. The Huntsman Redemption, now this is just an incredibly budget tutor card that people probably aren't going to remove or have removal for early game. And if they do remove it, that's kind of fine by us anyway. Shark Typhoon is kind of just cool in this deck. We cast a ton of enchantments, so now whenever we cast enchantments, we're just going to net a dope shark with flying. Wound Reflection is also very impactful in this deck. It's basically doubling up on all of our Kimi triggers, which we are already like quadrupling up on, so this can drain our opponents very quickly. Additionally, just slapping someone in the face for six is also very valid because that's going to cause them to take 12. One last thing to note, this is each in step. So even if your opponent slaps your other opponent for six, they are also going to double up on that damage. Moving on to card advantage, we have Call of the Ring and Phyrexian Arena, just a solid way to draw a card a turn. Jinka Taxis is going to be amazing. It's very easy to keep a full hand in this deck because of all the enchantment draw we have. So the fact that we can just flip this to draw an additional seven is kind of insane. Not to mention the board wipe on this kind of helps us out. It bounces all of our enchantments back to our hand and then we get to play them for free next turn. So you're going to drop all of your card draw enchantments like Enchantress's Presence first and then you drop all of your other enchantments. This will drain out our opponents extremely quickly and start getting us insane value and they won't be able to come back from that. Extraordinary Journey. This is just a solid removal spell that we can also bounce to our hand in a pinch and recast it just triggering all of our enchantment synergies again. Windfall's just the one of the most efficient ways to refill your entire hand so it's definitely going to be in this deck evolutionary leap is actually insanely good in this deck because half of our creatures in the deck are mutate creatures and then the other half just generate an insane amount of value just by having enchantments into the battlefield so you kind of win either way this card just kind of gets us there Moving on to ramp, we have Leyline Immersion. I absolutely love this card. It costs four mana, but nets you five, so you actually gain mana by casting this. It's insanely underplayed in my opinion. Dawn's Reflection, Grafted Growth, Blighted Burgeoning, Utopia Sprawl, Wild Growth, and Fertile Grounds, along with New Horizons, are all going to enchant our lands and give us additional mana. It's one of the most effective ways to ramp in an enchantment strategy, because now while we're ramping, we're additionally drawing cards. 
Farseek is going to be very good. I included Farseek just so we can get to those islands or mountains. Soul Ring is going to be insanely good as always in Arcane Signet. That way if we get stuck on lands early game we can have all colors. Moving on to removal we have Imprisoned in the Moon, Song of the Dryads, Kenrith's Transformation, and Deep Freeze. These will absolutely hose over your opponents especially when you play them on their commanders. Binding of the Old Gods is going to be amazing. It's removal, it's ramp, and it gives you death touch. Not that notable but can come in handy in a pinch seal of primordium just some solid removal beast within gets rid of anything causing us trouble and it's the most flexible removal spell in green let's get into this play test first hand we've got mountain swamp fertile ground yes we like this we're gonna try it out let's draw a card which one's fertile ground uh and to add one mana of any color to okay cool so it's the mana fixing one there's some that add green, there's some that mana fix, so the mana fixing ones are the way to go. We'll put it on this forest here, and then we will pass turn. Let's throw another one out here, let's see, we could slam Phyrexian Arena here, or we could go for this kind of sort of card draw. Um, it ends up being the same thing, so <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll slam this one. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna slam our commander. Yeah, and then we're gonna go to our next turn. We're gonna go here, and we're going to one, two, three, four for a ley line immersion. And then we're gonna tap our commander for five mana. This card's insane. And then we're going to play this. That gets us our little toad guy. Kimi, and then we are going to play Phyrexian Arena, which will draw us a card. And then we will go to our next turn. Boop, now we have all the mana in the world. So we can do a couple things here. I kind of want to slam this. Just because, oh, I get to draw another card off Phyrexian Arena, sorry. Okay, cool. Yeah, I kind of want to slam this. This kind of seems like the way to go. Also, Gorgos is amazing in this deck, but we don't really have anything to fight. But just know, we could slam this this turn, and then start targeting our creatures, and then that's going to be a bad time for our opponents, because this guy's absolutely massive. Um, but per, for the time being, let's just kind of try to do what the deck wants to do. We can mutate onto Kami, and then 5-6, slam, Primeval Bounty... And that's going to net us another Kami. And then we'll we'll keep track of how much life. Let's add a let's do it this way. Let's make a copy of this. And this will be how much life we've done with Kami. Or sorry, yeah, how much life we've done. So that's going to be one because we cast the primeval bounty, and then we'll draw a card from Enchantress Presence. Okay, cool. Destiny Spinner, we didn't leave up any green mana. So that kind of sucks there, but we're just going to take it back. Actually, I don't even think I dropped a land this turn. Tell me if I'm a cheater or not. So Kami's going to do two damage now since there's two Kami's. And then we'll draw another card. Ooh, I like this card here. Okay, next turn. This is going to get us into the spells that we need. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait, sorry. I'm missing Primeval Bounty triggers. So whenever you cast a creature spell whenever you cast a non-creature spell whenever you're... okay so this was a creature spell so we should have a 3-3 beast not super important but how this deck does win is if we can't drain people out with Kami we're obviously just gonna start hitting people in the face um, so that's going to be five six seven we are going to drop this and then look at the top seven cards of your library one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think Whisper, the, the Silk right here is what we want. And then look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal a non-saga permanent from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest at the bottom. Okay, yeah. So we're going to grab Whis um, the Whisper Silk here just because super efficient for what the deck wants to do. And I'm actually going to show you something that's really busted with Whisper Silk right here. So we're going to tap this for two green. 
So that can cast the Whisper Silk and then return it to the hand. So that's going to get Enchantress Presence. We're going to draw a card. That's also going to hit Primeval Bounty. So we are going to put three counters on our commander, making him bigger. And then we're going to two mana again, do that same thing, draw a card, and then one, two, three. Also, Kami triggers on both of those. So that's an additional seven damage that we've done in total. And then we are out of mana. We can't do that anymore. So we will just go to our next turn. Boop. Okay, and now we've got the Shimmer Wing. And then this triggers. So let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we've got Ivy here. I wonder if Ivy does anything here because we would get copies of these, but this is a cast trigger. If we had an ET, if we had something that cared about enchantments, ETBs, that would be busted. But I don't think Ivy's very good here. We might grab Ivy anyway. <laughs> okay, we will grab Ivy. Actually, no, no, no. Give me that soul ring. We could do the soul ring. And the thing is, with Doomwake Giant and Whisper Silk Quilt, or Whisper or Whip Silk. We can wipe the entire board because all we have to do is cast the Doom Wake and then keep bouncing back and forth and that's just going to wipe the entire board and then we can swing out with our entire board and kill everybody with our Kami army. So let's try to do that actually this turn. Um, we're probably going to want more mana to try to do that so let's grab Soul Ring instead. And now let's bottom all these, move to the bottom of your library, let's go ahead and cast the soul ring one two three four five for the doomwake giant that will draw us a card and create another beast token and deal more damage with our kami so kami is going to go up to nine damage now and then we will another thing we could do is if we want to go long game we put endless evil on our uh, gem Razor, and we start making more Kami token copies. But I think we're just going to try to end it here. I don't know if we can get there, but we are going to try. So that's one enchantment. Oh, I'm sorry. I have not been drawing off the Phyrexian Arena. Ugh. Misplaced. So we are going to go um, Whip Silk and then return it. So that's going to put another three counters here. We're gonna do another two damage with our Kami's. So we've done 11 damage with Kami this game. And then additionally, that's going to trigger our Doomwake. So Doomwake has now... So whenever Doomwake Giant or another enchantment enters the battlefield. Okay, so now everything gets minus two. And then we can go ahead and do that again. Whip Silk, return it. Another two Kami damage. Doomwake Giant is now at three. Uh, I should have been drawing cards. Ooh, we did get... Do we have any open mana? We don't. But if we did, we could slam the... The Wound Reflection here, and that would be game. Uh, because that's five, and I'm tapped out. That kind of sucks. But we are going to tap this for five. And then that'll do the Whip Silk two more times, and it'll leave one floating, so then we can cast the Whip Silk again. So we're going to get three Whip Silk clap or triggers. So that's going to do Doom Wake all the way up to six. So everything gets minus six this turn. That should wipe the board. And then that's going to give us one, two, three, four, five, six damage with our Kami. So we've done almost 20 damage with our Kami this turn. So now everybody's half health regardless. And then we are going to go ahead and get three triggers on our Primeval Bounty. Since our commander is tapped out, sadly, um, and that's what I was kind of doing. I was kind of trying to get Primeval Bounty, make our commander big enough to start one-shotting people, which I think we'd get three more triggers off of that. So an ad additional nine counters. Yeah, we got him to 21 power. But since uh, I needed the mana from the Leyline Immersion, we are instead going to put three counters here, three counters here, and three counters here, and then we're just going to try to kill everybody here. We could, okay, so this is 13 damage, and then this is, um, yeah, an additional 
and then we have our beast token. So we could kill one player here, and then the other two are at 20 life because of the Kami. But honestly, like I said, we just passed turn here. Uh, we can slam the mountain, then we can easily... Do we even ley line immersion? We could leave this and then make it unblockable and kill one player outright. I think we just slam one, two, three, four, five. I think we slam wound reflections. We do the whisper silk thing. Bounce it back. Play it. Kami goes up two again. Um, Doomwake Giant does the thing. Ooh, I forgot to draw off uh, Phyrexian, and then we'll draw off the en or Enchanter's Presence. I don't think I drew off the Enchanter's Presence last turn either for the three Kami triggers. Or sorry, not Kami triggers, but Whisper Silk triggers. Okay, and then... Um, Oh, this triggers. So we gotta put a non-saga permanent into play. Probably just... Yeah, Gorgos. And then we just fight everything that we need to fight to get off of our opponent's board. And then we're going to play... Shimmer... Shimmer with Wings. Sorry, Shimmer Wings. That's another two Kami damage. And then, so that's a total of four Kami damage this turn, but with rune, Wound Reflection, that's going to be um, eight damage that they're going to be taking. So I only need to deal 10 damage to one player and 10 damage to the other, and then Kami is going to kind of do the rest, or Wound Reflections is going to do the rest to kill everybody. And then additionally, when we're casting those non-creature spells, we do have the Primeval Bounty Triggers. Um... We can just also make our commander unblockable, which I think we will do. I can't tap the swamp to do that, but we'll say I tap this instead. So we do have a 12-12 unblockable commander, so that's going at one player, and then the other big shit's going at the other player. Turn eight, we got their budget deck. I'm kind of happy with that. This deck's just kind of fun. You just kind of make a lot of Kami tokens. You drain the opponents for a ton. You generate a lot of value. The best two cards in the game we got this playtest which is um, Shimmer Wings and Whip Silk. The fact that we can pay two mana to set off all of our enchantment triggers is kind of insane. And then we just keep bouncing it back and forth, just generating a ton of value. And um, I'm kind of here for that. I definitely missed a lot of the Phyrexian Arena triggers, so sorry about that. But um, yeah, I think uh, this deck can get there and you can get there on a budget. So I hope you guys enjoyed. With that being said, I would like to thank my patrons, right? Uh, Chicken Salad, Excessum, Newsome, you guys are amazing. Uh, Excessum, I hope you enjoyed the deck tech. He kind of challenged me to build a budget deck, and I think it turned out all right. So I'm excited to see what you think about it. I would also like to thank all of my other patrons. You guys are amazing. We vote weekly on a voted deck tech that I then build. So if you want to become a part of that, link to the patron is in the description down below. As always, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors, and I will see you in the next one.